Hi, and welcome back to the Lock Around the Clock for week 11. First, let's get started with my good friends and sponsors at LewDogs.com. Go to LewDogs.com today, find out what all the hype's about, see why they're the hottest handicapping site on the web. Check out their free rolls. Also, check out their free bets. Yes, they got free bets there. Check it out. It's all good stuff at LewDogs.com. Now, getting on to the 1 o'clock lock. Um, 1 o'clock lock, we're featuring St. Louis at home, taking on the New, uh, New York Jets coming in. Uh, a Jets team that went out to Seattle last week and got... Let's put it this way. They got outperformed quarterback-wise by the defensive backs of Seattle, who had one touchdown compared to Tim Tebow and Sanchez, who had no touchdowns. Um, this is a team really, just two teams going completely different directions. New, uh, the New York Jets are just imploding at this point, uh, like I kind of figured they would. Uh, they have no running game, really, to speak of. St. Louis is a very stout defense, underrated defense, and especially at home where it's going to be a very fast track, which they like to play on. I look for Dowell Richardson and Steven Jackson, who, who just came out of nowhere last week, to really run it up literally on the Jets. And look for Sam Bradford to have, have his way with Danny Amendola down the field. Um as well as the rest of that receiving core against the Jets team that's pretty much decimated on both ends of the ball. I don't look for the Jets to get out of any kind of a funk, especially not here on the road against the team, like I said, underrated uh, defensive-wise with St. Louis. St. Louis is a much better team than we see uh, on paper, and if they had a much better challenge ahead of them, I think it would be a little bit of a tougher game to predict. I don't see St. Louis having any kind of problem on either side of the ball. Look for a couple defensive touchdowns. Look for a couple offensive touchdowns. Look for the Jets to get wiped off the map here in St. Louis. Take the Rams, lay the three and a half comfortably. That's the one o'clock lock. On to the four o'clock lock, we're looking at the New England Indianapolis game in New England. Uh, both of these teams are pass happy and can light it up at any given time, especially against the porous defense, which both of these teams have porous defenses. Uh, although they can get a little upstart and a little jump here and there, I don't see it happening completely in this game. Uh, I do look for both offenses to thrive. The total is 54. I know we got a lot of high totals this week. This is one of them I think is going to go well over. I could see Tom Brady getting in the groove on this game and being able to run up 30 points on their own in New England. I don't see a point where... The, the passing attack of Indianapolis won't have the same opportunity. Uh, Reggie Wayne has historically taken out and has played very well against New England. He is uh, Andrew Luck's top target. I do see the running game uh, with uh, with Indianapolis picking up in this game. I also see the running game with New England. Uh, Stephen Ridley getting uh, back on track and playing the way they were earlier in the season with their running game, which, of course, will let Brady command the field later on. Look for the total in this game to go well over the 54. That's your 4 o'clock lock. On to the 8 o'clock lock. We're going to go with, yes, the Ravens traveling to the big ketchup bottle in Pittsburgh where Byron Leftwich will be under center again. Uh, we saw the abortion that that was last week in Pittsburgh in that second half against Kansas City, a team that they should have manhandled, uh, especially as they were picking up momentum in that second half. Unfortunately, Big Ben went out, and that was the story of why that game did not happen uh, for us. I know that was my Monday night lock. Um, look for Baltimore to come in here and be able to take command of the field. I see Ray Rice in this game having a pretty – Pretty big game. Uh, also, Torrey Smith getting downfield and opening up things probably in the second half for Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore is going to stack that defensive line uh, because right now Pittsburgh, all they have to rely on is their running game. And I know, I know Baltimore has been susceptible or susceptible rather against the run. They've let teams run all over them as of late with Lodi Naha being uh, injured, uh, Ray Lewis not being out on the field uh, defensively, uh, Ladarius Webb is not there. Uh, I, that could pose problems if Ben was on the field because they'd be able to throw, but they're not. They're going to have left, which it's going to be a horrible game. I look for do uh, domination by Baltimore here, and I know they're not like a dominating team on the road. Uh, they play a lot better at home, but I think Flacco is going to be very comfortable in this game as it is at um, divisional opponent I look for them to be able to take command of this game late uh and and just kind of run away with it I don't see left which doing anything but maybe throwing a few touchdowns the other way uh look for Baltimore to cover the three and a half in this game and sleep like a baby 
take the Baltimore Ravens, lay the three and a half. If you were following me on Twitter, I did throw you a couple NBA picks last night. One with the Jazz, we lost, unfortunately, even though they beat Philadelphia on the boards, on the glass, in the paint. They just couldn't take control of the game shooting-wise. Um, but I did give you the Knicks' first loss last night. We had Memphis. We were all over them, minus six. So follow me at GinoT32 at Twitter. Also coming up, we got Turkey Day, and I'm going to have a Turkey Day 3 play for you this Thursday coming up. We'll have a special video. Look for that to come out on Wednesday. Uh, until next week, take it to the book, take it to the bank, and as always, you take it easy. <laughs>